Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. In today's Nutri Dabba, I'm going to be showing you how to put together two exciting snacks for your office Dabba and a wholesome lunchbox. The first snack is going to be a nutty chocolate high fiber biscuit cake which is packed with the goodness and fiber from the NutriChoice Digestive High Fiber Biscuits along with the walnut sunflower seeds and a homemade chocolate syrup. You won't believe it, how easy and quick is it is to put this entire snack together. The second snack is a roasted makhana and for uh, lunch it's going to be a green moong dal, sprouted green moong dal pulao which is really quick to make in a single pot in a pressure cooker. So without wasting any time, let's just dive right in and I'll show you how to put together this Nutri Dabba. So the first dish that I'm going to show you is a snack which is the Nutty Chocolate High Fiber Biscuit Cake. Really simple to put together. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to make the chocolate sauce. Homemade chocolate sauce, really simple and healthy and you'll see the ingredients that go into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add in uh, the butter into a saucepan. So we're going to add all the ingredients into the pan. And I'm going to add in the water, the vanilla extract, the honey. The honey is a natural sweetener. Typically in you know most chocolate syrups that you get outside is has a lot of added sugar. And this is a great way, you know, I mean I'm going to be showing you snacks with have no added sugar, but natural sweeteners like honey, which add to the great taste and health as well. Okay, and to this I'm going to add in the cocoa powder. So now I'm going to turn on the heat and allow the entire mixture to melt and combine and become a nice chocolate sauce and simmer it for about 3 to 4 minutes until it become, gets a nice smooth and creamy consistency. So keep stirring the chocolate sauce while it's getting cooked and in, when the initial phase of melting you can keep it at high heat but then turn the heat to low once you notice that it's all combined together and then simmer it for about 3 to 4 minutes. So the chocolate syrup looks nice and creamy and it's got a nice shine on the top. At this stage I'm going to turn off the heat and then proceed to show you how to put all of this together to make the biscuit cake. So to begin making the biscuit cake and putting it all together. So I'm going to be using these Britannia NutriChoice Digestive High Fiber Biscuits. They're packed with the goodness of whole wheat and are also rich in fiber, adding to the taste and crunch of this biscuit cake. So I'm just going to crush them with your fingers and you want a little bit of chunks and you want a little bit of um, powder as well to give it that nice cake texture. So I'm just going to go ahead and crush a um, few of these biscuits into my bowl. So now that the biscuits have got a nice crumbly texture and you can see some chunks of biscuit in here as well and uh, this is perfect and this is how you want it to be. Now I'm going to add in all the remaining ingredients, mix it all together and put it into my pan for setting. So next I'm going to add in the sunflower seeds. They're also packed with protein, lots of minerals and nutrition and walnuts. You can also add almonds or even peanuts if you like. So finally I'm going to add in the chocolate, the homemade chocolate sauce that we have made and this is going to be the binder for the biscuit cake. So we'll add it in and I'm going to mix the chocolate syrup into the biscuit crumble, the nuts and the walnuts. So mix it well until all the chocolate gets well combined into the biscuit and nut crumble mixture. Okay. So once it does, I'm going to show you how to set it into a pan and refrigerate it. It's a really simple snack to make, isn't it? The chocolate syrup just took less than a minute or two to make with the three to four minutes of simmering and uh, biscuit crumble was ready, walnuts and sunflower seeds were ready as well and it's super simple to put together. Great, so now this is well combined. I'm going to show you the pan that I'm going to set it in. I'm going to keep this to the side. And this is the pan. So um, you can either set it in a loaf pan or a rectangle or cake pan um, or any other pan of your choice but I like these square pans. Uh, you get them in, you know, anywhere in the store, baking store. I'm going to grease them with butter and dust it at flour. So just like how you would do it with a normal cake and then press it, press this biscuit crumble mixture into this and put it in the refrigerator to set for about three to four hours. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and grease this. Go ahead and grease and dust the pan right now. Smear it with butter around all the sides. Dust it with flour. And we'll tap it around so the flour gets evenly on all the sides. And any excess flour, go ahead and dust it off in the sink and you'll be done. 
I'm gonna go ahead and spoon this mixture into my cavities of my pan and then press it in to set. So while this is uh, getting set, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make the sprouted green moong dal pulao. So to begin making the green moong dal, I have a preheated pan in the pressure cooker. We're gonna be making it in a single pot. I'm gonna add in some oil. And to this, we'll add in our chopped ginger and garlic. I always like to add fresh ginger and garlic because it adds to great taste and flavor to the dish instead of the um, you know, pre-made ginger garlic paste. That's the garlic. And now we have some chopped onions. And we'll saute the ginger and garlic and the onions until the onions soften just a bit. And it, it'll change its color and then you'll notice that it's also becoming soft. At that stage, we'll start adding the remaining ingredients. So now that the onions have softened, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the spices, some few cardamom pods and a cinnamon stick. I have some green chilies, give it a stir. And we'll add in the chopped tomatoes and the turmeric powder. So I'm not gonna be waiting for the tomatoes to soften and become a masala because they're all gonna get cooked in the pressure cooker. I don't like bunawing my masalas too much. You must have seen that in my cooking a lot, right? So I'm just gonna give it a stir and um, We'll add in all the remaining ingredients. I have some vegetables. This is carrots and uh, green beans. And finally, the green moong sprouts, which I've sprouted and kept. And you can use any other sprouts like moat as well, or even black eyed bean sprouts or a kala chana sprouts. Completely your choice. Green moong tastes great. But if you add any other legume, then you need to add a little more water to it so that it cooks really well. Okay going to go ahead and add this in and we'll also add in our washed rice salt to taste and two and a half cups of water gonna give this a stir and I'm gonna cover the pan and allow this to cook for about uh, four to five whistles or you can cook it for about two whistles turn the heat to low simmer it for about five minutes and the pulao would be ready and when when it's ready when you've turned it off allow the pressure to release naturally because the rice continues to cook while the pressure is uh, still on okay so we're just going to give it a stir check the taste if you see you need to add any more salt and if you wish you can also add some ghee to it to add to the flavor but i'll add the ghee towards the end once the rice is cooked so i'm just going to cover it and we'll wait for the whistle So the pressure was released completely and I'm able to open the cooker and beautiful. Look at the colors and the moong dal is cooked perfectly um, and so is the rice. It's nice and fluffy. This stage, if you wish, you can drizzle some ghee for additional taste, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. So now that's it. Our moong dal pulao is done. And I'm going to show you how to pack our nutri dabbas. So I hope you enjoyed watching the series of how to put a nice nutri dabba together with green moong dal, a delicious nutty chocolate, high fiber biscuit cake, roasted makana for a snack. Do give these um, uh, dabbas a try. When you do, do, don't forget to take a snapshot of the dabba and share it in the comments below because like always, I'll be looking to hear back from you. So until then, until next time, happy cooking and healthy eating.